Welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex, and today we're going to be looking at several different ways that you can decorate around villager houses. Uh, there were so many submissions for this one. I like narrowed it down to 25, and from there I had to just pick them off one by one until I had this list of 15 that you'll see. So be prepared because these are some truly amazing islands that we're going to visit today. Before we get started, I did want to say thank you to every single one of my members. These are all of Lexus Guardians and sponsors. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, if you're a Lexus friend, I love and appreciate you as well. Thank you to everyone who has been supportive of my channel. And yeah, let's get right into today's video. The first home decor idea here is very natural, but with some complex terraforming, I must say. I'm loving the colors, all of the earthy tones are really great, and this house has like a moat around it with just little wood planks area where you can get through to the house. I think that's so cool. I also love that it borders the beach. We have, you know, the additional opportunity to create more space for the villager, more themed areas, I guess. And this pathway to the left I thought was really nice as well. We've got framing with the cliffs and it just looks amazing. Everything looks just gorgeous, I think. I also love these custom designs. If you're interested in custom designs throughout this video, make sure you check the description and go to the creator's social media. They will all be linked where given and there you can ask for any sort of custom design. Here we also have this elegant kind of island. I am loving this space for Punchy. I thought these colors work so well for him. They remind me of his like generic villager shirt the one that he wears automatically and i just thought it was so cute he is so precious this island was actually an all cat island which i have so much respect for and this area just did punchy so much justice i think i even like the wreath i feel like even it caters to just him as a cat i also think that his favorite color is blue so i really like that that is shown here throughout the area with the blue pansies the blue details on the pillows Everything is just perfect for him. I have so much admiration for this creator. I also like how the area was boxed in with hedges. That's one way that you can kind of separate your villager homes. Next up, I think you all are about to be astounded because I've never included a modded island in my ideas videos, but this is an example of what you can do with a modded switch. I won't go into what that entails, but you can Google it. This creator has created this space with their switch that is just, it's not even possible in the base game and I thought it was so gorgeous. There are still obviously elements that you can carry over into your island that are so cool, but just look at these details. Oh my gosh. I thought that was just so cool. Look at all the things in the water, the stones coming out of the waterfall itself. I thought this terraforming was super inspiring just for anyone who was decorating their island. And I really liked the decor around the house itself. I felt like it was very... I don't know, it was fitting for the color theme of the house, which I really liked. That's definitely something you can work from. The color of the house in some cases is very interesting and can inspire what sort of items you use nearby. I thought this had just such a perfect uh, aesthetic going on and it was beautiful. I could have stayed here all day. Moving forward, I thought that this was such a creative use of the standees that we've been given, the new designs. Look at how cool this is. Gonzo has his own tree house. Very fitting since he's a koala and I also love, I think it's a floating block is used to elevate the butterfly so it looks like it's on top of the tree. That's so cool, so cool. Also, I managed to find a little lookout point that looks straight at Gonzo's little tree house. I actually referenced uh, the Instagram for the creator and found this lookout spot through that and I was like, wow, what a beautiful opportunity, ah, the view. Everything was so well done and I especially loved the root custom designs used here at the base of the trees. 
Something else I thought was super helpful if you are kind of stuck on how to decorate around a villager house was picking a neighbor for them that offers, you know, unique opportunity for symmetry between the two. And we see that here kind of in two separate areas. It's like offset symmetry first between the houses and then at the table as well, that little area in front. I thought this area was so cute and also it avoids having you know a full-fledged neighborhood you can have little units beside each other without making a whole neighborhood but by the way if you want neighborhood ideas i have a video for that as well Something I especially loved about this island and the way the creator used symmetry was the colors here are so nice. They're so cozy and welcoming. This just felt like, I don't know, like a homey island. I don't even know how to describe it, but it was so beautiful and just so relaxing to visit. Speaking of relaxing, I thought this next island was the perfect example of that. This had just the most restful vibes, I think, of any of the islands we visited so far. I absolutely love the colors, the time of day, all of it was so great. And I believe the creator told me that the secret beach idea is that this is a nice little sleeping place for the mermaids when they're tired. I love that also, and I just think it looks so cool, the little shell bed. It's such a nice and underused item. Look at it go. I'm gonna, I am the mermaids. Without, just ignore the legs. Um, I also, I really like that they use the summer shell there. The additional blue touch is a really nice one, a really nice one. Marshall, I think, is the owner of this house. And you know what? He deserves this beautiful meadow of just blue and purple hues. Everything was so great. I also love this use of the wedding bell. Another really good jumping off point if you are stuck on a villager house is to orient the space around it with the color of the house. So you can do well the color of the house or basically any color. You can just choose a color and run with it. This was obviously super fitting for Tangy. Her house itself is like an inverted orange tree. I just... I love her so much. She is the embodiment of orange, but this island did such a good job with colors throughout. I wanted to showcase Marina's house here as well because it's so good. And even the objects kind of play off of the villager because you see there are, you know, watery items and she is indeed an octopus. So, you know, go by species, personality, color of the house, do what you need to do. Even color of the villager since these two happen to match the colors that you know go well with their houses too actually that might have been intentional by the game devs just thinking about it just by chance the next villager i decided to check out was also an octopus this house belongs to octavian and i thought it was super fitting that it was placed here at the very southernmost edge of the island right on the edge of the beach it's right beside the river outlet as well and it kind of makes octavian seem you know like a pirate but the idea here that i thought was important is that you can decide how to decorate based on where on the island you place the home so if you want it to be near an orchard so your villager can be a farmer go for it if you want it to be beachy put it on the beach you are not limited i just thought that was really good to point out because it can make it easier based on where you place the house how you decorate we are moving right along friends i wanted to showcase next this little like zen area this has like japanese zen vibes and i was living for it this is toby's house so i thought it was also super fitting that we see some of the karo karo karopi items placed about uh we see the frog and the lantern for instance i also love the little detail of the food being shared at the shrine I just love all of the little details here. I'm also really liking that we're in a bamboo grove, but that's clearly not the theme for the whole island as I've passed by several hardwood trees and cedars as well. I just really like how separate this area feels, but it's still natural to the landscape. It feels like it belongs here and all of the custom designs just make it feel so gorgeous. This next island truly enchanted me. I was just blown away by how everything was designed here. We have an orchard bordering this little veggie garden that is, you know, guarded by Lucky, whose house I just passed by. We also get to see the island creator here, but I absolutely loved this. I mean, look how cute all of the veggies are. The little umbrella crate, the bamboo shoots that have been halted from growing, all of it just works together so well. In 
and I don't know. I just, uh, all of the furniture was perfect. Everything was placed in a way that I thought was so impressive and cohesive. There are just, I don't, I don't, I can't think of a single critique for this area. It just turned out so brilliant. I feel like I walked around here for ages, but definitely, definitely an idea. And I also like that this space doesn't really rely on terraforming at all. You know, you've got just a bunch of flat land and it's been used so effectively. So if you don't like terraforming, reference this area. It looks amazing. I thought that this villager house area was so unique. Here, Pico has her own little coral beach, and I think this coral custom design is absolutely stunning. I mean, look how amazing it is. Look at the layers in it. Ah, oh, I was astounded by this. I thought it was just so beautiful, and I especially love that you can lay down on the little blankets and look like you're resting on the coral. How beautiful are all the colors here? I loved the little dropped star fragments that match the kind of tealish blue color in the coral. All of this just uh, amazing. Again, I'm loving that we have a beach house, but the custom designs really take it to another level, I think, another level. And I love all of the reddish brown touches around her house. Everything looked just so wonderful here. Everything, uh, even the flowers, amazing. The next island, coincidentally, also used star fragments very creatively, although in a completely different way. I was absolutely taken with the color palette here on this island. We have so many bright blues and pinks. It had such a fairy tale vibe. Also, I like paused there because I was impressed that they'd managed to use the bunny day lamp here. All of the illumination is so lovely at this time of day. But yeah, they use the star fragments to make a sort of star fragment garden. It's like we're growing stars here on this island, and I think that is so fantastical. It's so ethereal. Everything just felt so magical and pretty, and I just, yeah, I love this island. I think it's such a nice place to be here at sunset, and Chai obviously agrees. This island had the most beautiful spring core vibes going on. It felt like a meadow almost, even though it wasn't just covered with flowers. I love Daisy's home here, I believe it is. I think that this area was so well done. It feels so simple when you're looking at it. It looks super natural, but all of the little details here are impeccable. The Cosmo on the bench, the little bowl of grapes, the crate of lilies of the valley. I mean, look at that. Look at this. It's so pretty. It's so cute. All of the colors were great, and I love the Cosmo shower over the garden wagon, like it's washing off the flowers. I have never seen it used that way, and I think it's so cool and creative. I'm also loving the color coordination, all of the very soft hues of white and yellow that really draw this whole area together, and it just felt so nice, so cozy here. I could have sat here all day and observed this island. Just lovely. To kind of mesh together two ideas we've seen so far, which are the bamboo grove and putting two houses right next to each other to make kind of like a little neighborhood. I thought this was a great example of using the other ideas we've already seen and making an area that looks nothing like either of them and is still absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at this. I also, I had to check his house because I kept thinking that it was Tucker, the octopus, and that's definitely an elephant. But yeah, it was Zucker, and I believe this is Pico. I just thought that, yeah, there she is. Anyway, I just thought that the decor here was so cool. An opportunity to use items that you might not use very frequently. Think outside the box. We have a hearth out here, the bridge, and there are even other houses nearby that you can travel to pretty quickly. I thought this was so cute, and the layers here were really nice. How the cliffs aren't just straight. Everything feels natural like these villagers just kind of set up shop by chance. Also, you can go back through the bamboo grove, and there's another house back here that was inspired by Lorian. How cute is that? I'm obsessed. Pico is after me. One last really cool opportunity to inspire your villager yards is to create a space that is based on some other type of media. For instance, this island is Pokemon themed. Uh, I thought that was super creative. This island was designed by a good friend of mine, Joe. Make sure you check out the description and 
follow his Twitch because when he reaches 5,000 followers, he's gonna do a stream in a maid outfit. And I think that everyone deserves that. I also really love the details here. I was especially taken by this little pond. I mean, tell me you see this. There are little Pokemon. I think that's Psyduck. I mean, oh, little cuties. But yeah, I loved all the colors here and there was so much decor. It just looked amazing. All of the color was so vibrant and it's also Henry's house, my birthday twin. So we have to stand. We have to stand. I just loved being here. It was so gorgeous and very inspiring. Also, look at the little Pokeball. That is all I have for you today. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching today. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Peaches sends her regards. She is too tired to do her voiceover, but she loves you all and appreciates you watching as well. Thanks again and bye for now.